Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today I want to talk to you guys about spy baits or spin baits or whatever it is that you want to call them. They're not brand new to the market. I'm sure a lot of you have already thrown them, but it's a it's a unique technique. It's I'm going to call it finesse power fishing if I can do that, if that's a thing. Because it's it's definitely more than going out and warming. It's more than true finesse fishing. But it's definitely not as much as real power fishing, you know, throwing a big jig or throwing a crankbait or a spinnerbait or a chatterbait. It's definitely smaller than that. So for the sake of this video, we're going to call that finesse power fishing. Uh, what are they? What are they for? Why do we throw them? How do we throw them? Let's jump into all this stuff. Now I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this was supposed to be a fishing video. I was going to come out and catch a bunch of fish on the spy bait for you. Frankly, my conditions aren't right. I've got a ton of bait in the water and I just don't have the drawing power to pull these fish away from it. So after about an hour, hour and a half, I just not getting the play that I needed. I decided to just sit down and talk to you about it. Down the road when I've got better conditions, we'll go out and smash them on the spy bait for you. So there are a handful of companies making them. There are two that I've personally latched onto. One's the Jackal, the iProp 75. The other one is Duo Realis, the spin bait in an 80 and a 90. Uh, the spin bait and the iProp are the two spy baits that, that I've had the most success with, the most consistent performance. Uh, action wise, they're similar. The Duo has a lot less roll and it tends to run a little bit nose up. But that said, it is a fish catcher. Uh, the Jackal, hook placement's a little bit different. Hooks are just on the bottom instead of bottom and back. I like this hook arrangement a little bit more. But I'm sure that a guy could fiddle around, especially since there's an eyelet back here, and change his hook arrangement, no problem. Uh, but I've just fished it stock, that eye prop, over the last year, year and a half. And uh, this one definitely runs flatter and has more rock to it. But both get bit extremely well. Uh, I seem to have a higher hookup ratio on the Duo. And before I'm saying all these names and I'm gonna talk about gear and all that stuff. So before you get too confused, just like in every video, down in the video description, I'm gonna link to each bait, to the specific rods, reels, lines, all that stuff. So you guys don't have to go searching for it. Uh, but we'll still talk about it here and then you just open up that video description down below it'll show you everything uh, but where was I the the duo seems to have a higher hookup ratio now I'm only speaking for myself I seem to, to stick more of the fish that bite however I seem to get more bites on the jackal so it balances out I'm actually catching the exact same amount of fish between the two so it doesn't, at the end of the day, I think it's a wash. You just need to try both and kind of figure out your preference. Now, what are these baits? What do they do? It almost looks like a topwater, right? Here we are three and a half minutes into a video and I haven't really even told you what it does. These baits sink. You throw them out, <clears throat> sinks down through the water column. Oh, depending on the bait, somewhere between a foot a second and two feet a second. They're just gonna drop down through the water column. It's not a topwater. And then when you start reeling, you just start a steady retrieve. These blades start spinning. That body gets a little rock and it just comes through the water. That's all it is. It is very, very finessey. Very finessey. Uh, but the fish just draw to it. Now it doesn't have the drawing power of say a big spinner bait or a swim bait or something like that. But I've definitely seen fish come 10 to 12 feet to pick it up. And what that's coming from, because when you see these things in the water, they almost, especially the duo, it almost looks dead in the water. I mean, it's just going like this. That's all it's doing. That's all you can see as it's coming through the water. So you're looking at that thing going, a bass isn't going to bite that. A bass can't even tell it's down there. But the reality and what you can't see is that these two little props are going so fast that even when you're looking at it, you can't see that they're turning, 
but they're putting out an incredible amount of water displacement. So they're sending waves out through the water and it does draw fish. So to your eye, it looks like nothing is going on. The bait is not working. The first time I threw it, I mean, I was staring at that thing going, I don't think those blades are even turning, but they were turning so hard and so fast I couldn't even see them. So they are turning, they're putting out a ton of turbulence and you see it if you like burn one back to the boat on the surface, you'll see how much spray is coming off those blades. That's when you realize how much turbulence there really is, even though the bait has almost no movement. So I, I have no problem calling fish let's say five to 12 feet to come out of cover and eat this bait. And that's the main place I like to throw it. I'll throw it out over points or out on flats. Um, especially I went back east throwing these for smallmouth. We destroyed them out on flats. We'd haul those fish up on, off of the bottom to get it. But when I'm fishing for largemouth, my best success has come around cover. So paralleling docks, throwing it over or around grass beds. And as long as you've got about four or five feet of clarity, I see no problem pulling those fish five to 10 feet up and out of that cover to come eat the bait. As your clarity drops, you need to get tighter to the cover, but they can still feel that, that vibration. They still will pick that bait up even in lower clarity down to a foot or two of visibility if you're right up against that cover. But that's the main place that you want to fish parallel to a dock around a grass bed down a riprap wall uh, somewhere where you can pull those large mouth out small mouth are kind of a different animal they love to hunt in the open so those you can throw it out over points up on flats and those fish will draw up and eat that bait gear wise these are finesse baits now they come with small hooks and you need to replace them with small hooks because they will wear out Balance is very, very important with these baits. You don't want to put the wrong hooks on them. So again, down in that video description, I'll link you to the exact replacement hook that I'm using uh, because it does make a big difference. They're little tiny hooks. You throw it on little tiny gear. Uh, I'm using a seven foot uh, medium light. So a very, very light rod. About as light of a bass rod as I will use. Tons and tons and tons of tip flex. That way when you hit those fish, you're not pulling the bait away from them. You're getting those little tiny trebles in and then just light drag, just let them pull. You just let them wear themselves out. I throw it on either, now again, I'm a braid guy, right? You guys know that. So I'm using 10 pound braid and then either six or eight pound leader. Now my water has a green tinge to it, so I'm using mono. Plus I like that stretch to not pull the hooks out of the fish. Uh, but if you're in crystal clear water, run a fluoro leader. But again, 10 pound braid to either a six or an eight pound leader and about eight feet a liter seems to be about right. Now, if you're using a, a less expensive spinning reel, I recommend 15 pound braid. Just personal life experience. When I use cheaper reels somewhere in this region, I cut 10 pound braid. 15 pound, I don't cut. 10 I do I think it's so thin that it can get down in there and it just it gets frayed up uh, but if you're using a nice reel a mid-range to a high-end reel 10 pound braid all day long it's phenomenal uh, the feel is there the strength is there it's great and it gives you more casting distance and that's key with this bait you want to cover a lot of water to pull those fish out the other setup because the duo comes in a larger size it comes in a spin bait 90 that one weighs a little bit more, a little bit larger hook, still a little tiny hook though. It's definitely not a big hook by any means, but I throw this one personally on a bait caster. This is a, a rod that I use for all sorts of things. You guys have seen this rod before. It's a multi-purpose rod. Um, I'm using my, what is it? It's an NRX obviously, but it's an 852 JWR. Uh, so a two power rod, very, very soft rod again paired with an Aldebaran and again, 10 pound braid to either an eight or even with the big one, even a 10 pound leader. If I think I'm gonna be around some bigger fish uh, so, that, so that they can pull on it a little bit harder, I don't get broken off in that cover. But those are my two. For the smaller ones, Jackal definitely on that spinning rod, 
seven foot medium light. I mean a really light rod. The bigger one, you can go to a bait caster if you want to, but it needs to be an extremely light bait caster. This one has enough weight that I can bomb this thing a mile with that Aldebaran. Uh, but if you're you're using bigger spinning, or excuse me, bigger casting reels, like a 200 size reel, you may have trouble getting the distance, so then you'll still wanna throw it on spinning. But you can go to a little stronger spinning, cause it's a, uh, I'm just eyeballing it here on the boat. I don't actually know, but in my opinion, that's gonna be like a size six hook is what's on that. And these guys, or a size eight and I'll look those up to make sure that I'm right uh, but that's an eight that's a six so again small hooks this is just a basic rundown for you guys but again fishing it fire it out the main retrieve throw that thing out there main retrieve you count it down you figure out whether it's falling a foot a second two feet a second then I count say I want to get to ten feet I'm gonna give this bait about five seconds and then I'm just going to start my slow roll. And that bait's just out there, a little bit of head wobble. And those props are churning water, putting out the vibration so those fish can key in on it. They'll come tag it. Uh, there are a couple things that you can do. Now, one is when you throw it out and you're counting it down, you want a line watch, almost like it's a Senko or a stick bait because it is, it's rocking on its way down. So you will get bites like a Senko. Your line will just jump and you want to hit those fish on the fall. But generally it's just a slow retrieve. But I found that if I'm getting a lot of followers, it does pay to either just kill it once in a while, just complete, not only stop reeling, but give it a little bit of slack so the bait starts dropping, or give it just a little pop of the reel. Pop once or twice in a cast, that's it. Like every. 20, 30 feet, one little pop. That's if you've got a fish that's just right on the tail of that bait and she's been following it for the last 20 feet. She doesn't know if she wants to eat it or not. Sometimes if they're right on it, just that little, just that little cadence change, that bait jolts a little. That fish has been following along that whole time going, do I eat it? Do I let it go? Do I eat it? And when that bait jumps, fish's gut reaction, just lash out and grab that thing. So again, it's, your main retrieve, just that slow roll. That's what you wanna do. That's how you're gonna get most of your bites. You'll just be rolling along and it'll just, boom, they just eat it. But if you're getting a lot of followers, if you're seeing them, don't be afraid to just throw in a little something and you will once in a while pick a fish off doing that. I hope that helps you guys. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. As we told you at the beginning of the year, we're shooting for 100,000 subscribers this year. We're about to break 50,000. We appreciate each and every one of you. I'm sorry this isn't an out catching fish on the water video. It will be in the near future. We'll do a follow up to this. But in the meantime, again, the two I like, that little Jackal Eye Prop, Duo Realis Spin Bait. They're both killers. This is a deadly technique when your spinnerbait, chatterbait, crankbait seems to be fading. The fish seem to be getting wary. Maybe the water's getting clear, but you don't want to be throwing that drop shot or a shaky and not covering enough water. This is a great in-between to transition between those two and catch those fish. I hope that helps. We'll talk to you soon.